This is the Xiaomi M365, and in this review, we're gonna tell you why it is the best scooter under $500. This is Chuck with Electric Scooter Guide, your leading source of unbiased, data-driven electric scooter reviews. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up. In this review, we're gonna cover performance, portability, including a trunk test, ride quality, build quality, including a drop test, safety features, overall pros and cons, and who this scooter is for and who it's not for. We're also gonna be comparing it to the close to $600 Segway ES2, as well as the a little bit less than $400 brand new GoTrax XR Ultra. Let's get started. Now you may or may not know, but this scooter is the most popular scooter in the world. Now that is on the personal market. It's also probably for the sharing market as well, because this is the scooter that Bird chose as its inaugural scooter when it first came out with ride sharing. So if you rode a Bird electric scooter or many other electric scooters uh, in the sharing market in 2018 to early 2019, you probably were riding on one of these M365 scooters rebranded for whatever sharing company that you were on. So this is actually quite an historical scooter because it helped launch what became the micromobility industry. But first the basics. Scooter can be bought between $350 and $400 in the US and it's available on Amazon Prime. More on that later. It weighs about 27 pounds. We tested the range at 14.6 miles and we tested the top speed to be actually 16.7 miles per hour. Now the Xiaomi M365 is actually decently fast. Whereas most entry level scooters are maxed out at 15, 15 and a half. Some don't even quite hit 15 miles an hour. This scooter we got clocked in at 16.7, so very close to 17 miles an hour at the top speed. Uh, you can compare that to the Segway ES2, which had a top speed of exactly 16 miles an hour, and the GoTrax XR Ultra, which topped out at 14.6, but actually goes between 13 and 14 miles an hour continuously. So now on our range test, the scooter did very, very well, especially given the price and the 27 pound weight of the scooter. We tested the range on this scooter to be 14.6 miles, which is really, really good. The Segway ES2 only got 9.8 miles. Now the GoTrax XR Ultra does have a pretty good battery. It's almost as big as this battery and it got almost as far a range. We tested that one to get 13.1 miles of range. Now the scooter has very interesting acceleration metrics because while it has only a 250 watt continuous or 500 watt peak motor, which is less than the 300 watt motors on the XR Ultra and on the ES2, it actually accelerates better than both of those scooters. We tested all three scooters uh, to 15 miles per hour and the M365 got to 15 miles an hour in just 6.3 seconds, which is faster than the 7.8 seconds it took the XR Ultra to get to 15 miles an hour and faster than the 7.1 seconds it took the ES2 to get there. So it's a faster scooter with less wattage on the motor. So it's pretty interesting how that all worked out. Now it's a similar story with the hill climb test, whereas the Xiaomi with its smaller motor actually beat the other two comparison scooters, sometimes by quite a bit, uh, with this smaller motor, which is really interesting. Now for the braking, uh, the scooter has a regenerative brake in the motor, which is in the front wheel. It also has a disc brake, which is located in the rear wheel. So you have a kind of a dual braking system, both of which are activated with this left uh, hand handbrake right here. Now, anything under about 20 feet for a single brake, we consider to be pretty good, and this scooter stopped in 16.8 feet. Uh, the GoTrax XR stopped just a hair faster, uh, but it has a very similar setup with a regenerative and a disc brake. The Segway 9 bot ES2 now does not have a mechanical brake except for the foot fender brake uh, that that scooter has. So that scooter does stop if you use both of them in almost 18 feet but if you're only using the electronic brake, you're gonna stop in actually over 50 feet. So the Segway does not have very good braking out of the box unless you're gonna ride on one foot uh, and not a lot of people wanna ride that way. All right, so this scooter is actually pretty portable, but it's similar to other scooters in the price class. There's not a lot of differences. Um, so it weighs 27 pounds, which, you know, for me, I'm a 160 pound person, 
no problem at all carrying the scooter. The, the way that it folds is a little bit different. Uh, you've got this um, little clasp here that's kind of a safety device and you can pull that back. As you can see here, you pull that back and then you pull this little tongue down which releases the little teeth back here. As you can see, right, it releases the teeth and then the scooter folds from this stem hinge. Uh, which is a little higher than other scooters and so this locks in right here So the stem does lock down. It is curved my hands Easily can fit all the way around the scooter, right? A lot of scooters have a wider stem uh, Which means they probably have the battery in it such as the go is and so because of that uh, It's a little harder to pick up. This one's pretty easy and at 27 pounds. It's no problem now, of course the stem is curved, which typically would make it harder to pick up. See, the stem has this angle to it. So just kind of like the boosted rev, right, at 45 pounds, that's hard to carry because of that angle. Um, this scooter, because it's only 27 pounds, is super easy to pick up, even with this curved stem. And whatever material the stem is made out of here, it actually kind of uh, grips, you know, your hand can actually grip it pretty well. It's not it's not smooth uh, Which would make it uh, harder to grip. I actually see smaller people all the time uh, carrying this scooter up a flight of stairs, so um, Many people, you know lift this thing up. I live upstairs. I have no problem carrying it uh, For me, it's a scooter that I could easily, you know, take up and down stairs um, On a daily basis multiple times with no problem. The scooter folds to dimensions of 43 inches long by 17 inches wide and by 19 inches tall. We do not consider this an ultra portable scooter because number one, you've got 19 inches, you know, from top to bottom and you have 17 inches, which is basically the handlebar width right here. So now compared to other scooters, such as the GoTrax XR Ultra, the XR is actually just a little bit more narrow because the handlebars don't stick out quite as far, but otherwise it's almost exactly the same folded dimensions. For the ES2, the ES2 is actually longer and wider, but because the, the folding mechanism on the ES2 is different, it actually sits about six inches shorter. So, you know, it really depends how you're gonna use the scooter, which one fits for you. They're all relatively small. Uh, they just have slightly different form factors, I suppose. So like most other elements of this scooter, the ride quality is hard to beat at this price. The M365 is outfitted with dual 8.5 inch pneumatic tires, which are pretty large for this class of scooter. Um, pneumatic tires, of course, are gonna be better for comfort, safety, and performance because they actually grip the road better. Now the pneumatic tires, while better for performance, safety, and comfort, are prone to getting flats, and that is one of the biggest complaints from M365 owners is that when you do get a flat, it is quite difficult to fix. You can go to our website. We have a special page just for repairs on the M365 to help you with those tire repairs. Now you'll notice while there is pneumatic tires, there is no suspension. So all damping from the scooter will come from the tires and then of course your body. The ride quality is good, but it's not great if you're going over very poor roads. So if you're on good to average roads, you're gonna be just fine. Uh, it'll go over cracks and it'll kind of really hold the road well but if you're going over really, really poor roads, you will get a brain massage with the scooter. So the controls are really, really good. So while you're riding, everything is really ergonomic. You've got your thumb throttle here on your right hand. And then of course you have your electronic, uh, which is the regenerative plus the disc brake, all controlled uh, with the left hand brake. You also have a really easy to hit bell, which you just pull that guy down right there. This also, as you can see from all the scratches, it doubles as the stem lock. So as you can see, the display here is somewhat old school, right? You just have the four dots here. Um, now you can do most things, but most scooters will give you a display that will show you your speed and other information. This one, as you can see, is very, very basic. To turn on the lights, you just click this button once, and once again to turn it off. Uh, if you want to put it into the uh, faster or slower modes, you just double click and you'll get into kind of like your eco versus, you know, super fast mode, I guess. Now, while you're riding, uh, the grips and everything stay on really well. They don't turn or anything like that. When you press down on the thumb throttle, 
you do feel a good amount of acceleration, especially considering the range and the weight of the scooter and all that kind of stuff. So it's a, it's a fun scooter to ride actually. It is kick to start, not zero start, which means that the, the scooter will not start. You know, I'm pressing the thumb throttle right now, scooter's not starting. You actually do have to kick the scooter to get it going. And where this can be slightly problematic is if you're starting up on a hill because you need to get the scooter to a little over two miles an hour and then gently uh, press on that throttle. I mess this up all the time. I know other people mess this up all the time. And then of course, when you're on a hill, it's just harder to get to that exact two miles an hour while you're gently pressing on the thumb throttle. So it takes a little bit of getting used to. It's not a big issue, but it's something that you just need to be aware of. Now there is an app for the scooter, which is pretty awesome. It will tell you how many miles you've ridden. You can lock out the front tire of the scooter and things like that. You also have the ability to turn on and off the cruise control feature of the scooter as well as uh, change the regenerative braking nature of the scooter. So you do have a lot of kind of fun stuff to play with, and then you can look at how many miles you've traveled and you know all kinds of good data if you're into that. Okay, now for build quality, you'll notice that this scooter does not look like many others. It's a very unique design, although there are some clones out now, of course. And what's more interesting is that it comes from a factory that is used to mass producing products, which is Xiaomi, right? Um, and so what they have that other scooters don't have is they have enough resources to put into quality control and uh, parts control and all that kind of stuff. So that way you get scooters that have a low failure rate. Now the scooter is not without its issues. There was an issue with the stem folding mechanism that affected uh, some customers, especially in the US. That has since been fixed and all new models, including the one that we've had for quite a while, have no issues with that at all. In fact, the stem really has no wobble at all to it and the handlebars have no issue at all. The scooter also has a wide availability of parts. Because it's so popular, there's tons of aftermarket parts available for the scooter. So if something were to break or you wanna modify something on the scooter, there's a lot of different parts available for you. Now the cable routing on the scooter is really, really good. You can see here, the cables are routed through the stem. So they come you know, out right here. It goes right into the stem, right? goes out the stem into different parts of the scooter and then everything has little rubber caps on it uh, that help with water getting into your scooter. One other feature that we notice about build quality and this has this didn't happen for the first couple hundred miles but after that the deck is really nice and it's easy to clean but you can see that the matting kind of your your gripping mat here does kind of the glue on it does kind of come off so it's not a big deal it just you know it's something that they could do a little bit better on, but you can always just re-super glue this up. Now compared to the GoTrax and the Segway ES2, they also are both kind of mass produced scooters that have really good quality control. I think the main difference is that the Xiaomi being more popular just has a wider variety of aftermarket parts or replacement parts uh, for the customers. All right, so the drop test, the scooter passed with no damage, cosmetic or otherwise. Okay, now for safety, the scooter is quite safe because it has the front and rear pneumatic tires, which are safer than solid tires, right? The Segway ES2 has dual solid tires. And so in the rain or on, you know, metal objects like a manhole cover, things like that, you are way more prone to slip on those solid tires. So the GoTrax and of course the Xiaomi has the pneumatic tires much more safe. You also have this disc brake right in the back here. So that's gonna stop you much quicker than any scooter with electronic brakes. The M365 also has that disc brake in the back and the regen in the front and stops in right around 16 feet, which is really good because when a car door opens in front of you or something else happens, you need to be able to stop quickly. Now for riding at night, you have front and rear lights. The front light is awesome because it's high mounted. So that means you're gonna be able to throw light onto the ground a little bit further in front of you. Plus it's easier for cars to see a higher mounted front light. To turn it on, of course, you just press the power button once, and as you can see, it turns on. Now it's not ultra bright, and you can definitely get uh, an aftermarket light. You can see our favorite in the video description. It also, though, has a rear light right here, which, as you can see, does blink when you press down on the brake hard enough. 
Otherwise, it's on all the time if the, if the lights are on. If the lights are not on, it'll just blink when you press the brake so people behind you know that you're braking. Um, if you're gonna ride at night though a lot, definitely get yourself an external kind of rechargeable red light that you'll put up on the back of your helmet or on your backpack, whatever you're using to ride. The last thing that we look for for safety is some kind of audible warning device. In this case, we've got a bell, as you can see here, which is actually quite loud. It'll be great if you are uh, in the middle of um, other bikes or other scooters, pedestrians, it's really good for that because they'll hear it but you won't like scare them with a electronic horn. Now for safety, the scooter is actually kind of similar to the GoTrax. It actually, you know, has a lot of the same features, although the GoTrax is missing the rear powered light. So there is no rear powered light. They just have a reflector on the back. So this scooter does beat the GoTrax in terms of safety, but just by a little bit. Now compared with the ES2, it is way safer than the ES2. The ES2 is actually not a scooter that we typically recommend for anybody. Um, the ES2 not only has no audible warning device, there's no bell, no horn on it, it also has solid tires, and for some people they like those solid tires because of the low maintenance, but the solid tires are going to slip on you if you're in adverse weather conditions, if it's raining out or the roads are slick at all, you're gonna slip on those tires much quicker than on the pneumatic tires that this scooter has and the GoTrax has. And then finally, the Segway does not have a disc or a drum brake. It's relying on the electronic brakes unless you're standing on the scooter with one foot, in which case you can use the foot brake as well. But without that foot brake, with just that electronic brake of the ES2, the stopping distance is around 52 feet, which is not good at all if some car is stopping in front of you. Now, overall pros for the Xiaomi M365 are many, and overall, it really is the best scooter, in my opinion, under $500, but it actually happens to be usually less than $400 when you actually click the link and see what the price is. It does fluctuate. At the time that we're filming this right now, the price is actually only $350. The scooter also has amazing range for the price and for the weight of the scooter, as well as above average acceleration. So you're gonna get where you're going a little bit quicker. Uh, it is a safe scooter. It's got a bell for warning pedestrians or other bikes. It's got front and rear lights, and it has really good stopping power because it has a real mechanical disc brake. The scooter is quite portable. It's light. I have no problem folding and unfolding it, taking it up and down stairs. Like other scooters that are above 45 pounds, I just don't want to do it. But with a 27 pound scooter, I don't mind using this every single day and taking it up and down stairs. It's also available on Amazon Prime, which very few scooters are available there. Amazon Prime is kind of the most trusted source for buying products because not only will you get the scooter in just a day or two, but also if you have any issues with the scooter or you just don't want it anymore, you can return it in 30 days, no questions asked to Amazon and get your money back. And finally, if you decide to upgrade from this entry level scooter after about a year or so, you can probably still sell it on Craigslist for $200, making your total cost of ownership pretty minimal. The most notable con is probably the screen. It's very lackluster with just its four dots. Um, also, the scooter's build quality is good, but not perfect because, you know, we have this deck mat issue coming up now, uh, you know, and this is going to happen on any scooter with tubed pneumatic tires, but they are prone to getting flats, especially in the rear tire. And when you do get a flat, it's kind of a pain to fix. And the last con is that the max rider weight for the scooter is 220 pounds, which is going to leave a fair number of heavier riders out of this scooter. The Xiaomi M365 is a fantastic scooter for anybody looking in the sub $500 price class. It's also amazing for anybody that's entry level or anybody that's looking for a scooter that's a lightweight option. The scooter is 27 pounds. For us, we think it is one of the best overall values in the electric scooter market. If we had a pound for pound best scooters list, this would definitely be on it. And it's absolutely in our top 10 scooters to purchase list. So if you're in the market for a scooter that is entry level, sub $500, or portable, that means under about 30 pounds, look at this scooter, it's a pretty good option. Now the scooter is not really for somebody that's over 220 pounds 
or has really poor roads or has a lot of very steep hills on their commute unless you want to kick a lot. It's also not for somebody that's looking for maximum amount of speeds, right? If you're looking for a scooter that's ultra fast, like 20, 25 or more miles per hour, this is really not the scooter for you. Even if you hack this scooter, you're not really getting much more than 20 miles an hour out of it and out of the box, 15, 16 miles an hour is what you can expect. But for somebody entry level, that's pretty good. And finally, it's not for somebody that cannot do a minimum amount of uh, repair on the tires if they were to get a flat. So check out our link to Tire Slime that's located in the video description because it will benefit you to use that. But there is a good chance that at some point when you own the scooter, you will have to change a tire. So if you're totally not mechanically inclined, then maybe look at something else. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe and give us a thumbs up so you can catch all of our content. Until next time, this is Chuck with Electric Scooter Guide. Ride safe and don't forget to wear your helmet. Now, if you're interested in a scooter that is the younger but bigger and more robust version of this Xiaomi M365, check out our review of the Ninebot Max. And if you're looking for a scooter that's entry level, but sub $300, in fact, $250 with our coupon code, check out our review of the GoTrax XR.